Well, a very big good evening to everybody in the audience today. My name is Neeraj Mandana. I work as an independent education consultant here in Mumbai. And I am also the founder of the Next Genius Scholarship Program and the Next Genius Webinars. And I welcome all of you today to this workshop on writing Common App main essay for your college applications to the US and a handful of other countries. Joining me today is Nicole Boensley. Nicole, a good morning to Nicole. Nicole is the Associate Dean of Admissions and the Director of Admissions at, of International Admissions at Union College, which is located in Schenectady, which is in upstate New York. It's a great pleasure to have Nicole. And we've done so many of these webinars together. So let's have some fun in this one. Um, I often hear students complain in India about writing essays. What do I write? What are they looking for? What is the right answer as if there was a right answer? And very frequently, I remind them that they are much more than their grades, that they have personalities, motivations, interests, passions, attitudes, style, vision, so many sides to their whole persona, the holistic person that they are, that cannot be captured in mere scores, in school grades or testing. And that is why college essays are such a wonderful tool to express who you are, what drives you, what motivates you, what are you all about? Um, so it's gonna be a fun session because you're gonna hear directly from the horse's mouth you're going to hear from an admission officer today as to what is going on in their mind as they are reading college essays. Now, I'm sure that there is no panacea to college writing, uh, writing college essays. There is no silver bullet, magic bullet that, you know, this is the right answer. There is no zeros and ones in the world of uh, uh, writing essays. Um, and yet, I think you're going to take away lots of tips and lots of advice on how you can do a good job of writing essays. Um, in particular, the workshop today is going to focus on writing the common app main essay or the main prompt. And if I can just share my screen, uh, I'm just going to do that in a moment and show you the common app prompts for 2021, 2022, right? So they're pretty much the same as previous years, except for one new prompt. Now, obviously, that means a lot to those of us who work on the professional side, but for a student, you're probably seeing this for the first time. So here are seven different questions that uh, pretty much every college you're applying to will want to read. Uh, the, every college that you're applying to via the Common App, which is a large number of leading colleges in the US and also um, many other leading colleges around the world. Now. Thank goodness you don't have to write all seven of them. You just have to pick one of them. You've got to find one that you can connect with and you have to write an essay which is up to 650 words long. I'm sure there is a minimum word count. I believe it's 300 perhaps. I'm not totally sure of that, but 650 is the upper limit. Uh, the, the dialog box won't let you paste something which is longer than 650. So the new essay for this year is number four. And let me read that out to you. It's reflect on something that someone has done for you that made you happy or thankful in a surprising way. How has this gratitude affected or motivated you? So that's the new one for this year. The others are pretty standard. And uh, this, is, this is one that you know pretty much every kid I have ever worked with has at some point thought about or written. And um, as you embark into your college applications, and I know that primarily we have a grade 11 oriented audience today, who's probably gonna be writing these essays in the summer to come or the fall period, as you walk into your college applications between October to December. So today's workshop is a head start. You get an early start. And uh, I, I hope many of you are able to take screenshot of this. Certainly we are recording this and it will be available later on our YouTube channel. Um, before I hand over the mic to Nicole, just a couple of um, topics that I wanna to touch on. Number one, we are also live on YouTube. So a big welcome to everybody who's watching us on YouTube. And number two, I would request 
uh, all of you to ask questions. Please ask as many as possible. We will try to answer all the relevant ones towards the end. Uh, please use the Q&A box to ask your questions. And having said that, I want to pass the stage to Nicole so that all of us can uh, take out our diaries and our pens and make some amazing notes on how college admissions are seen from the eyes of admissions. All yours, Nicole. <laughs> Thank you, Niraj. Thank you for that generous welcome. Uh, I hope everyone is well this evening. I am grateful to be talking to all of you and that there are so many here. I am sad that I'm not actually in India. My trips to India have been too little as of late, like many of you, I'm sure. So um, I am gonna talk a little bit about the Common App and I think a little more specifically about, uh, and I'm putting my email here, I'll add it again later too. If you have any questions, of course, reach out to me, but a little bit more too about essay writing in general, because I think that the Common App has one approach to it, but I do think that many of the tools I'm gonna to talk about today really um, will apply to whatever essay that you're writing if you think about it deeply. The work that you'll do or the things we'll talk about today are things that you can apply regardless of what sort of personal statement or essay that you're writing. Now, I, I am the mother of 12 year old twins, so I spend a lot of time watching animated films. And so I hope maybe you are familiar with some of these things. Uh, Spies in Disguise, if you haven't seen it, come on, you guys, it's great. It's pretty funny. We just watched it again last week. Um, so I will encourage you to check it out. But a lot of students, as Nira said, feel a little bit like this when we talk about essay writing. And what I want to tell you is that we're going to make it it's a little less scary and hopefully a little bit more fun of a project by the time that you're done. So Nira showed you the updated questions for the common application this year. <clears throat> and uh, I do have an example in here as well. I haven't updated the questions yet, but you will understand why in a minute, because, you know, what is the purpose of the essay? What is, what is the winning ticket in terms of what you're doing with the essay? Well, this is it. <laughs> this is what you're actually trying to answer in the essay. And if you have done these things, <clears throat> if you have taken this opportunity to personalize your application a little bit more and tell us a little bit about the things listed there, your ambitions, your life, your interests, then you've accomplished what the essay is trying to get to. <clears throat> Many students, now this is the 2021 common application prompts. And Many students will start with this, much like Niraj said, start with this and see what inspires you. And regardless of new or old questions, what I, you will find the things in red, always in questions, essay prompts questions for the common application, because this is the point of what we're getting at with the essay. So the things you learn, your thinking, your personal importance, your personal growth, what captivates you, Tell us about your, your experience, your choices, right? So there's always a, an essay of your choice. And, and so those things in red, when you look, what it really resonates is really not the answer to the question. The question is there to sort of get your creative juices flowing, as we say. But it, the point of the question is really just to give us an opportunity to learn more about you and some of those things I, I highlighted on the previous slide. So in the end, what we really want to know is not really necessarily about the topic. The topic is the, the tool you're using to tell us more about you and what you can reveal about yourself. So that's, that's really the point of the essay. Now that's in some ways a little trickier, but a little more fun because what you're answering is the question, who am I? There are adults who can't answer this question. So as a, um, you know, aspiring 17 and 18 year old college going student is really asking a lot for you to sit back. And as you're just, you know, getting ready to launch into your college career where you really develop who you are as an adult to sit down before that and, and take some time to reflect on who am I can be. Uh, it can be challenging. So I'm going to offer up a few, you know, ideas on how to come up with those, uh, those thoughts or how to focus who you are. 
Um, because one thing I'll find from students often when they're trying to answer the who am I question is they'll turn to their really fabulous independent counselor, or they'll turn to their um, counselors at school or their teachers or their parents. And all that does is really give us an idea of who you are through those people. And sometimes their voice or their idea of who you are comes through more than your own individual self. So one tool that I like to have folks think about when they're thinking, if you haven't seen this movie too, you should in preparation, just inside out in preparation for writing your college essay. Um, I feel like this is a good way to start thinking about where you might want to begin or what, what part, who, who makes up you, what components make up you. So if you haven't seen this film, it's the, the view from inside a young girl's brain that those cute little characters in the front are her emotions. And they're looking out on her brain basically and her personality islands. Now the personality islands are sort of, you know, the main things that are important to you, the main things about your personality that are really going to stand out. So for her, you'll see family island, you'll see fun island, hockey island, and um, friendship island. Sorry, I mixed the two of those up though. But so what you want to think about, maybe a good place to start is, you know, if you had islands of your personality, things that were really essential pieces of your experience or what makes up you, what's important to you, what would your islands be? So you can write that down and maybe take some time. And this might be something that you can think about with others, you know, and brainstorm, but make sure they're essential to you. What are your islands? What are sort of the key things that are, are really an important piece that make up you? Um, and write those down. So that's a good place to start in your brainstorming about what you want to write about. <clears throat> so you remember I talked about you can start with the questions on the Common App. Right now, what we're doing is starting with the who am I piece, and we'll come to the questions later. So the next thing you can do, which is kind of fun, is um, make a list of 21 details from your life, interesting facts that describe some small, random part of who you are. Now, I put some very actual examples in here because I think sometimes people think, oh, you know, 21 details. What kind of details are you looking for? And, you know, they can just be random, random details. These are three that I, I pulled out of my head at some point to tell you a little bit more about me, um, but just random details. So, um, and I really did have a recurring nightmare as a child of a big green blob. I don't know what crazy movie I watched, um, but it stuck around forever. But these 21 different details would just be random things that um, jump out about you, uh, about your life that we can help again to build some ideas about where we might want to go or things we might want to include in your essay. Now, this is something you can do either early on to generate ideas or do again later as your essay starts to form. And, and I'll talk a little bit more about why that is. What I would love um, to do is in a little bit, I'm going to ask folks to um, I don't know if they have the chat function, Niraj, I guess, let me know, but it'd be fun to see some of the answers to these later in the chat because it, it gets to be a little bit more fun and I can give some examples to help you build your essay a little bit later. So this is the next piece that can kind of help you to think about what you want to include in your essay or how to achieve your goals of your essay. So this is something called essence objects. Um, so essence objects are things that um, seemingly are really just mundane maybe. And, and you don't really, they don't really have a ton of like bam meaning to them, but they have a lot of meaning to you. So objects that sort of get to the essence of who you are, or maybe talk a little bit about the, the sort of islands, the important personality islands that we talked about before some objects that maybe are reflective of those islands. So for example, these are actually some of my essence objects. Um, pickled herring is maybe not something you all have experience with. It's a food. It's a traditionally very Scandinavian and German food. Um, and it is a pickled fish, basically. And uh, it's, it's not necessarily all that common. And I would say it's more of an older food. It's something my grandmother always made and something my family always had around to celebrate holidays, 
um, and were sort of an essential part of my family, but not necessarily very common. And so one of my islands is definitely family island. And it's something that really brings me into the moment of my family and makes me think about it. The other thing, you know, on here seems very common, right? My passport takes me a lot of places. It speaks to the fact that I love to be out in the world. But the other thing, the reason it actually is on here is that I'm a first generation student who grew up in a pretty small and rural area. And my family really didn't leave the state I was born in. So the fact that I was able to achieve my dreams of not only having a passport, but having been now to over 58 countries around the world pretty frequently, that sort of ex expresses the distance that I've come as a person, right? So your essence objects, so sit down and think about those. You can, there's a list of questions, you know, you can Google essence objects, or I can um, send the full list in Niraj, but the, the essence objects ex exercise are just like these series of questions that you can answer that'll help you think like, what, what might be some objects that get to the essence of who I am and speak to who I am? And, and one of the things I love to think about from that movie I mentioned earlier, Inside Out, if you've seen it, is the idea of core memories. So they talk about core memories or these special memories, the memories that sort of keep coming back to you and are sort of these delightful, delicious moments that you think back on, either big or small, those core memories are the ones that even long after you've left childhood, maybe stick with you or moments throughout your life that are just these special moments. So another thing you can do is write down some of your core memories and have those as a tool. So in the end, when you've walked through the series of exercises, um, again, I'm just going to have a little flashback moment for you here, you know, talking about what are your islands? And maybe from that, what are some of your core memories from those islands of your personality? Making a list of some small details from your life and then coming up with some essence objects. What will happen at the end is that you then can think about, okay, so based on this, I've spent some time with myself to think about who I am. You know, what are some things that are coming through to me? And, and last year when I did this workshop in India, one of the young men said, you know, okay, I'm thinking about writing my essay about cricket because cricket is really something that's very important to me. It's been important to me for a long time. Um, it's something my dad played cricket. And I said, okay, well, so tell me a little bit about like, if you had to, then if you wanted to tell that story, tell me about what some of your essence objects would be around cricket. And so he, he said, well, it would definitely be my cricket bag. And I said, okay, so tell me a little bit about what's in your cricket bag, right? And we talked through what the individual pieces of things were in his cricket bag. And I said, can you tie those to each item to a core memory in your life or, uh, you know, sort of an island of your life, right? And so then he used the objects as vehicles to reflect not only on an important memory that then reflected on a personality island. So I learned through his essay where he normally would have just told me maybe about a cricket match that, that he won and saved the day. Instead, what he did is he told me through cricket about what are some important things to him through his personality islands and through very important memories. So I was able to learn more about him and really be in his story with him in a very visceral way because of the objects and the memories and the very personal things that he was able to include. So that's a way that you can take all of these separate components when you've done them and bring them together to make what is an answer to an essay or a question very personal to you. It makes sure that you shine through your essay rather than having it be an essay. You know, those, those pr essay prompts, everyone's answering them. So how do you make sure that when you answer that essay prompt, it doesn't sound like an answer that anyone could have written. I want it to sound like something that really resonates with who you are and reflects things that are only you or, or individual to your personal experience. So these things that I just talked about are vehicles or tools that make sure you've spent some time thinking about you and that as you look at your essay, that you're using those tools to bring yourself through in that essay. Now, what some of the questions on the common application 
are what we would call challenges essays. So the challenges essays really are essays that um, cover a challenge specifically. Like, you know, the, we were losing at the cricket tournament and, you know, we were, one guy was hurt and then we saved the day. You know, we won the game. Challenges essays are really tricky because oftentimes they become very standard and formulaic and are often thing are, are really telling us very little about the student who wrote the essay and become very redundant and similar to something everyone else has written. They're the most challenging type of essay to write quite often, honestly. When you write a challenges essay, it's difficult to write one and not have it sound just like every other person who's written a challenge essay. So what I would say is, as you can see on this clipboard here, if you're doing a challenges essay, make sure you've identified the challenge. What were the effects of the challenge on you? What were your feelings through that process? What were the needs that needed to be happening? What did you need? And what did I learn about it? What did I, what did I do about it? What did I learn about it? and bring it back to you and then finish at the end with what happened. But make sure that there are moments very specific to you. And again, there are things like the um, essence objects and other things that you can use to make sure that you're shining through in the essay. <clears throat> I repeat about the challenge essay. Um, I'm not sure. Let me know what you'd like me to repeat, but I, I think really just making sure, you know, the challenge essay is really you know, tell me about something in your life that was a difficulty or tell me about some, a time you overcame something. Those are challenge essays where you talk about a challenge or a difficulty that you overcame, if that's helpful. So that's what I mean by a, a challenge essay. So something like a disease or a medical malady, for example. Yes, you know, someone could tell us about the specifics of that experience, but forget to tell us about how, um, how you might, uh, how it might impact you. Um, so one thing is it could be a supplemental essay. So no, what, let's go back a little bit. Cause I think some people are a little not sure about what I mean by challenge essay. So let's see here. Mm. Um, I saw them on the earlier one. The lessons we take from obstacles we encounter number two can be fundamental to later success. Recount a time when you faced a challenge, setback, or failure. How did it affect you? And what did you learn from the experience? So this is an example, a very clear example of a challenges essay. Um, so what you see is the, the challenges essay is an example here in number two. Tell me about an obstacle or an encounter and the later success. So that actually, that common app question is, is a challenges essay. It's having you tell me about challenges or difficulties or obstacles you faced. So as I mentioned, that can be a very tricky question to answer because it be can become very formulaic. I faced this challenge. I did the thing. I over overcame the challenge. That sounds like the same essay everyone does. So you want to spend a little time with some of the tools we talked about earlier and making sure you cover in that essay, well, what were the effects of that challenge on you? Okay, so if you're talking about, someone I mentioned, you know, if, if, you, if you're talking about like, I had a disease and okay, so what was the effect on you? The personal effect, not just the medical effect that I can Google, what are, what are the personal effects on you? What were your feelings that you experienced? What did you need from that experience? Um, what did you do about it? And how, what did you learn from that experience? Okay, so th that's very different than just spelling out the challenge, the medical component of what happened, and then the end, right? So bringing much more detail to it. So in the end, what we want to know is what is your personal story to it? Who are you through this process? And not necessarily just the answer to the question that could apply to many, maybe in a similar situation. Did you shine through enough? in your essay? Did you give me moments or slivers of you? So that's where, when we talk about things like essence objects, remember, um, you know, I mentioned them earlier, they, they allow you to tell your story. So for example, this year, a young woman, she wanted to tell me about the importance, her essay was talking about the importance 
of some of moving, right? She had moved from different cities throughout her life. Um, and she wanted to talk about that move and how it impacted her. And I said, that's great. You know, so tell me, let's talk a little bit about, you know, what some of the core memories you have from those, each of those locations. Tell me about the core memories you have in those locations. Like what is your favorite memory from each location? So she wrote those memories down. And then I said, okay, so tell me what some of your essence objects from are from those moments. And she wrote those down as well. And in the end, her essay actually ended up being about her dog because what she realized was through all of her moves, and though she still talked about her moves and the experiences that she gained and some core memories, the dog was always present. <laughs> the dog was her core uh, one of her main essence objects, dog hair more specifically. And she talked about her dog's personalities and how she ha- her dog helped her navigate each move, whether it was making friends um, or the feeling, the, the idea of feeling lost or making mistakes. So through her dog, she told us about her individual experiences in each of these places she moved and the, sort of the key lesson or sort of the personality island she was reflecting in each of those spaces. So again, you can go either way. The the projects we did allowed her to sort of decide what it was she wanted to write about. And then she went back and thought about elements throughout her story that, that she wanted to tell. And then when she was done with her essay, we went back again and said, okay, where do I need to know a little bit more about you and what sort of objects or core memory can you bring into this to make it more about you rather than just a general story, a general telling? So what's your story? So some of the sort of nuts and bolts types of tools that you can use um, in writing your story is to make sure you use specific nouns, power verbs. You know, it, it's an exa- example here. The clapping of a thousand wings broke the silence, right? So it doesn't have to be poetic like that. That's a little over the top. But what you want to do is sort of ignite all of the senses, just like it says, describe through the senses. Make sure if you're telling about um, about something, if there are moments where you can draw in more senses, the sense of smell, of taste, of hearing, Right. If you're writing about your mom's cooking or a specific dish that you're that she's making um, or that you really love, tell me about the flavors and the taste. How what can you compare them to? Right. So make sure that, you know, through your writing, we can see, hear, touch, smell, taste, think, feel the things that you're expressing. Um, do it with adjectives and adverbs, but let's not get carried away. Oftentimes I feel students, they get excited about this process and then they get a little carried away with their use of adjectives and adverbs and it kind of gets a little bit lost in terms of what they're saying. So use these tools, but be careful with them. And and the way that you know that you're doing okay on your essay is to think about some of these things here. Now, um, don't repeat in your essay what you've written elsewhere. So some students, there was a mention of an additional information or um, you know, sort of special circumstance essay. So if you've had, um, you know, something you think is really important to tell us about, if it was an illness or a loss of a family member, there's an additional information section on the application where you can tell us about those additional situations that you think important to know. If you have a a learning difference, if you have had um, a, a loss of someone in your family that affected your academic progression, You can put those in the uh, additional information piece, but then your essay should not be redundant to that experience. Your essay really is a moment in time, really just a little snippet, like a little taste of who you are, not encompassing your whole resume. Your essay should not be a rewriting of your resume. We have your listing of activities. We don't need it spelled out item by item in, in more expanded detail in your essay. That is a poor use of your essay. You really want your essay to be very narrow and focused so that you can dive deeply and bring out those beautiful moments, whether through your essence objects or your memories, that you can do it in a very narrow focused essay and really do yourself justice to tell you, tell us about you. If it's a challenge, show us the outcome. What happened in the end? Don't forget that part. Address the prompt. So in the end, after you've done all this work, make sure if you've selected a question, That's not, I'm just going to tell you about something that's important to me. Make sure you've addressed the prompt. 
Um, be authentic. Don't try too much. Don't get too carried away with a thor thesaurus and do make sure you proofread, proofread, proofread. And the way that you can make sure you've achieved all of these things is my favorite word of wisdom. I tell my kids over and over again, I still use this. Um, I'm sure Niraj does this. I, we all do it if we do it well. Take your essay and go into the bathroom or a private space and read it out loud. So there are things that we do when we read something to ourselves that a lot we skim. So we can skip over things we don't understand. Um, it says my internet connection is unstable. So I'm hoping I'm doing okay for you here. But um, go ahead and read it over. And through that process, when you read it out loud to yourself, it, it doesn't allow you to skim and skip over the errors you've made. When you read it out loud, you're engaging your voice. And that engagement makes it so that you catch any errors. Um, it makes it so that you catch any sort of things that don't sound like you. So you make sure it sounds like your authentic voice. You haven't gone too crazy with the adjectives and adverbs. It makes sure that you haven't, you know, double worded by accident, or there's not a word you're using too often. Many of us do that. So if you read aloud, that really allows you to make sure that it sounds like you, someone hasn't gotten heavy handed with the editing um, and that it really reflects who you are. So those are my key tips. And hopefully I didn't take too long, Niraj, um, to make sure that you sort of can bring home your essay uh, in a way that reflects you and sort of answers the prompt, but answer, answers in a way that is getting to the point of the essay, which is who are you and how do I tell my story? So. Thank you for this opportunity and I'm happy to answer some questions. That was really a lot of fun, Nicole. Every time I listen to you give that presentation, I get excited about writing essays and who <laughs> I am. And you know, so so, fun. <laughs> maybe I will write an essay and submit to you one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> promises, promises. <laughs> So as I was listening to that, you know, I was just thinking about writing essays with a new batch every year, you know, mm. and helping them think about who they are. And, you know, in my experience, people rush into writing essays. You know, it's, oh, I have to write an essay, switch on Word and start typing, you know. I always tell students, think, reflect, you know, who are you? What do you want to say? And so much of what you spoke, I think, is going to resonate with the students who watch this video later on as to how do you go about unraveling who am I? How mm -hmm. am I different from others? You know, because most of the students, when they start writing essays, whether they're writing the Common App main essay or they're writing other supplementary essays, very commonly, the first thought is the one which is so generic, which is the one that all of us, most of us would say, right? But then you got to dig deeper and find that unique something about you and how that differentiates you from others and how that was so meaningful to you, how it shaped you, how it helped you grow. So thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. I'm not going to take up too much time of everybody else here. And uh, as I was listening to you uh, present all of those tips, I thought, and I pulled out an essay that one of our students has written in the past, if I can just share my screen. And the question here is, some students have a background, identity, interest, or talent that is so meaningful, they believe their application would be incomplete without it. If this sounds like you, then please share your story. So for those of you who are listening carefully, I'm going to uh, read this essay out to you. And I love that bit about reading essays out because I always do that, that is so important. Um, and, and just reflect on all the tips that Nicole has given you and try to think about this person. So here goes. As a curious yet confused and half lost eight year old, I kept inquiring how things around me worked from my parents, friends and teachers. Through repeated questioning and finger prodding, I had discovered how an elevator, the clock, and the fan worked. What I was not able to figure out was how the pool of improvement, if you throw something into this pool, an improved version of the thing will be thrown out. The anywhere door, a door that takes you to the place you're thinking about, the bamboo copter, a helicopter that emerges out of your head and allows you to fly away. 
and the and the time stopping watch a gadget that allows you to freeze time at will worked it came as a surprise to me when shopkeepers didn't stock these items and my friends tried to convince me that they were not real when i remembered them when i reminded them that doremon uses those gadgets they often laughed it off this laughter was curious because for me this 22nd century feline robot sabka pyara everybody's favorite doremon was someone i idolized you see doremon was a japanese cartoon show with the protagonist being a troubled middle school boy nobita who seeks help from a robotic cat from the future doremon he was a maverick with futuristic gadgets and often produced them at will in order to solve the problems that faced nobita as someone who felt like nobita most of my younger years i too wished a compassionate doremon would arrive in my life but like every other 8 year old i soon forgot doremon and nobita my childhood friends from yesteryears their inventions and imaginative creation seemed like magic tricks for little children with the help of my school education i soon embarked into the real world a world that taught me about math physics chemistry and biology teachers spent a lot of time on educating us about the rules of nature and an even more amount of time in testing our learnings you can thus imagine my surprise when i came across a 3d printer for the first time while all the other students were amazed by this new technological innovation i explained to the teacher that i already knew about it years ago when i mentioned to the class about how doremon once gave this machine to nobita and how nobita drew a ball on a paper and inserted it into the 3d printer and it emerged as a real ball they burst out into laughter the teacher too did not take kindly to my insights and asked me to grow up a second jolt came upon watching the movie inception in this film leonardo dicaprio used certain drugs and psychological technologies to trigger specific thoughts and hack the minds of other people he truly seemed to have copied this idea from doremon when i explored the idea of dream control online i discovered that rem and sleep researchers were working in this direction indeed reading up on howard's professor barrett's latest research convinces me that she too has been in touch with doremon but above and beyond everything else i'm completely convinced that the developers at google amazon apple and microsoft know about doremon too how else would they have made google translate and amazon echo to be exactly like the devices i had seen 8 years ago in the hands of doremon with the coming with the coming of artificially intelligent programs robots and the internet of things all of us will finally get a chance to experience life changing innovations while most of my friends from primary school have forgotten doremon i have kept him alive in my mind till date as a college student an undergraduate researcher and one day a technology developer i will give life to doremon's gadgets so you heard about uh tips and ideas from nicole and now you heard me read a previous essay this is an essay from a student who was very successful in college admissions not to say that you are now going to go and copy and write doremon essays but to remind you to prod yourself and dig deeper and to find the doremons that shaped you so having said that i want to also present you with an interesting opportunity every year i take all my students uh, that i work with uh, who are grade 11 students to a wonderful two week long camp in alibagh we have fun at this camp people make friends uh, we play lots of sports there's singing music dancing late night conversations but more important more importantly we talk about college we talk about what institution would be a good fit for you this is a very safe environment for students away from parents away from the world to to really be themselves 
and to openly and frankly and honestly express that in their college application and in their essays. We have a lot of fun at this camp. It is the thing I most look forward to every year. Historically, this has only been available to students I worked with full time in my private practice. But with Next Genius webinars, we would like to offer one scholarship to a student, uh, all expenses paid participation at Off the Grid 2021. We call it Off the Grid because we truly go off the grid. We go to a wonderful, beautiful resort close to nature and a very relaxed vibe. And we do things like this. If you see this picture and this tractor, this is a picture from I think three or four years ago. And we were at this resort and there was a farm next to it. And this is a tractor that belonged to the farmer. And we just walked, we went for a jog in the morning and we bumped into him and he asked us, who are you? What are you doing here? And we told him we were here to write college essays. He seemed very baffled by that, but we spotted his tractor. And then in the evening, we, we rented the tractor from him and we went around the entire village. And that was so much fun and a wonderful memory. And our camp is full of memories like this and full of friendships that you carry with you into college. So for those of you who would love to come to the camp, I invite you to fill this application. I do require you to write one very simple 150 word essay on uh, something that you have done during high school that you really care about. All right, so you're gonna have to post that, tell me a little bit about yourself. And then my team and I are gonna identify one student that we will fly into off the grid 2021. Not to say that there's nothing else for everybody else who has registered for the event today and participate today. Uh, this essay as a sample will be emailed to all of you along with the video recording so that you have it for future. It's a, it's a great reference tool for all of you. Uh, I'm not saying that this is the perfect essay or anything like that. It's just something that was done by somebody like you a few years ago. And another opportunity for you, and we will identify 10 lucky students who will get a copy of the 71 essays book. This has a collection of 71 very interesting and diverse essays from previous, student, previous year students who made it to some wonderful colleges around the world. And, and this can be a great tool for all of you as you embark on writing college essays. So uh, it's available here on my website, but we will identify 10 students um, and we will be sending you a free copy of this book. So having said that, I want to stop sharing my screen and thank all of you for participating today. Thank you, Nicole, for participating and presenting us with all your wonderful insights. Um, thoroughly enjoy it every single time. And I'm gonna try and answer some of these questions that have come up. So all of you feel free to post any questions and in the next five minutes, we will try to answer all of them. But otherwise, this is it. This is the end of the webinar. Thank you so much for participating. I'll be switching off the video and uh, just answering the questions for the next five minutes and then we will be closing the webinar. So thank you so much. Thanks, Nicole. Keep in touch, see you soon.
So thank you, everybody. I have answered all the questions. Have a wonderful evening. See you next time.